Hey guys, welcome to Terrifying Tales. In this video we are going to represent you a story about Sean Phillips and the hat of all hats, dragons, bossy eggplants, and angry villagers from the 1500s. Sean Phillips has seen it all. Sean Phillips and the Hat of All Hats is a hilarious adventure of a chapter book. Shopping with his mother and sister is always a drag, yet when Sean stumbles upon a mysterious hat with written instructions inside, his afternoon gets a lot better. From that day on it's one adventure after another for the fourth grader and his family, whether it be dinosaurs attacking their house or werewolves roaming their yard, the excitement never ends. However, things get a little out of hand when Sean wears his hat to school for his social studies presentation, and Birchwood Elementary School will never be the same. Sean Phillips in the Hat of All Hats is geared toward ages 7 to 10, though enjoyed by all. Whether read silently or aloud to a group, one thing is certain. If you enjoy Advi, N-T-U-R-E, and a good laugh, this 14-chapter book will have you on the edge of your seat. Chapter 1, Up a Creek, I have never been in trouble before but I sure got in trouble today. Now when I say trouble, I don't mean that I forgot my homework and had to stay in at recess. And I'm not talking about a little goofing around in class that has the teacher moving my seat either. No, what I did caused the police, the firemen and even the media to show up at school. Yeah, I'm in that kind of trouble. My name is Sean Phillips and I'm in fourth grade here at Birchwood Elementary School. It's a really nice school and it sits way up on a hill with trees all around. Things are usually quiet and peaceful here, but today is a very different story. The police and firemen are searching every room while the students and teachers are gathered in the gym singing songs to pass the time. I wish I was with them right now. Instead I got a one-way ticket to Principal Braxton's office. He questioned me up and down, and now he's having words with my parents. I wonder how mom and dad are taking the news. As I said before, T. His is my first time getting in trouble. Now I know what you're thinking. If I'm such a good kid, how did I get into this situation in the first place? Well, let's just say that I took my class on an unexpected field trip. You see, we have been learning about the age of exploration in social studies, and we were each given the name of an explorer to research. Today we presented our work. When I got up to speak, pencils and books went flying around the classroom. Then the windows burst open, the room filled with water, and a huge ship came crashing through the door taking out a whole wall. We all boarded the ship, and had the greatest adventure ever. We sailed through some really bad weather. Then we met up with some angry natives who charged at us but I got my whole class back to school safe and sound. Maybe when this all blows over, I'll receive a medal and a town parade in my honor. Okay, probably not but a kid can dream, how is this possible you ask? It's sort of a long story but if you let me tell it. I promise you won't be disappointed. Okay so what do I tell you first? Well, I'm just your average 10 year old boy. I like playing soccer with my friends. I also like playing video games and building castles with blocks. I think farts are hilarious, but who doesn't? Anyways, I live with my mom, my dad and my five-year-old sister in a blue house on Pinecone Circle. My dad, Joe Phillips, is a software engineer. My mom, Jennifer Phillips, works a few days a week as a nurse. My sister, Katie, goes to morning kindergarten at Birchwood Elementary. And in case you were wondering, it is super annoying to have your little sister at the same school. At least kindergarten and fourth grade are not on the same floor. Mom, dad, Katie and I are a pretty normal family. We're always laughing at each other's jokes or getting on each other's nerves. Sometimes we go for bike rides after dinner and sometimes we just go outside and play. Katie likes to pretend she's a fairy princess when she's running around in the yard. IUSU. Ella I pretend to be a superhero. Having superpowers and saving the world seemed like the greatest thing ever. And today some of that actually came true. Are you getting really curious now? Okay, so here we go. It was about two weeks ago when mom dragged me and Katie to the department store. Shopping is never fun but shopping for clothes is the worst. I thought it was going to be an awful afternoon but that is when everything changed and that is where my story begins. Chapter 2 Price Check I usually took the bus home from school, but on that afternoon mom picked me up. Katie was with her and I knew that meant one thing and one thing only. She had plans for us, those plans were to go shopping at the big department store. Yuck, Katie was excited but I wanted to barf. Mom do we have to go shopping, I asked, sulking in the backseat of the car. Yes we do. You guys are growing so fast, soon you'll be too big for your clothes, can you drop me off at home first, I grumbled. I don't think so. Ten is too young to stay home alone. But you let me vacuum and do the dishes all the time, what's your point? My point is that if I am old enough to do all those things then I should be old enough to stay home alone too. Nice try Sean but you are coming shopping with us. Besides how would I know what clothes to buy if you aren't there to try them on? I didn't agree with her. 
I would have been fine at home by myself and my old clothes still fit perfectly. I argued all the way there but mom didn't budge. When we pulled into the shopping plaza parking lot, mom parked really far away from the store entrance. I wondered if it was in a different zip code because it was such a long walk. Come on, Sean, she nagged. I've seen turtles and sloths move faster than that. Well, they probably weren't going shopping. Mom took Katie's hand, and they rushed toward the door with big smiles on their faces. I thought they were going to break into a song and dance number. I could see it all red. Why buy me clothes the musical? Coming to a theater near you? No thanks. I would never want to go see that. Anyways, the sliding doors opened, and they happily went inside and over to the kids' clothes. Mommy, can we look at some pretty dresses? Katie asked. Sure we can. I think you need some new shoes too, Mom said, handing her a pink box with sandals in it. Try these ones on, they're cute. How long is this going to take? I asked, getting very restless. I was thinking about a video game I wanted to play at home. Actually, I would have been happier going home to do chores than walking around the store. We've only been here for a few minutes, Sean. Try to relax. Mom walked down another aisle. But it feels like we've been here for a million years, I whined. What if I die of boredom? Don't be so dramatic, she said. You need some new clothes too, so lose the bad attitude and try some things on. She handed me an ugly pair of sneakers that I would never wear. Then we walked Ove. Over to the shirts and she picked out this striped thing with weird sleeves. This is nice, Sean. See if it fits you. No thanks, Mom. I don't want to look like a zebra. How could she possibly think that would look good on me? If I wore that thing to school I'd be laughed at all day. This torture went on for a while. I didn't like anything she handed me, especially the pants she picked out. They looked like something a clown would wear. And in case you were wondering, I don't do clowns. You should pick up some more underwear while we're here too, Sean. Mom, don't say that so loud, don't say what's so loud, she shouted to me. That you need more underwear, thanks a lot, Mom. I bet she said that on purpose. I was so embarrassed. Ha ha, giggled Katie. Sean needs new undies, shut up Katie, Sean needs new undies, Sean needs new undies, stop it. I don't want underwear, I don't want any clothes, I just want to go home, well I'm sorry, mom said. But I need to g. Get Katie a few more things. If you're getting that impatient you can go look around the toy section. Finally, a good suggestion. I could only take so much family shopping at a time. It seemed like mom and Katie could waste hours in a store. And if they're looking for shoes those hours could turn into days, believe me, I've seen it happen. I wandered off, passing many shoppers who all seemed to be having fun. I really didn't understand that. A tall woman with big hair stood in the pajama section looking at a robe. She reminded me of a character in one of my video games. I imagined her pulling out a gold sword and slaying monsters as they jumped off shelves and ran down the aisles. Of course that didn't happen. She just kept looking at the robe so I continued on my way. When I finally got to the toy section, the first thing I saw was sets of building blocks, most were ones that I already owned but there was a box I'd never seen before. So I took it off of the shelf to have a closer look. $79.95 and. Away, I gasped when I saw the price tag. That was a lot more money than I had saved up with my allowance. Feeling defeated, I put the box down and headed back toward mom and Katie. I was almost to the clothing and shoe aisles when I came upon a big rack of hats. They certainly looked better than that zebra thing so I decided to spend a little time trying some of them on. I looked at hats in a bunch of different colors and styles, and then I saw it. It was a faded brown cap hanging way on the back of the rack. I grabbed it right away. I put it on and walked up to a mirror. I kind of looked like an old-fashioned detective. I turned to my left and then to my right, seeing how it looked from every angle. It's fair to say that I was hamming it up a bit. Oh yes, this will work, I said, admiring myself. Then I took the hat and went to find Mom and Katie. I met them as they were headed up toward the checkout lane with a cart full of stuff. Sean, look what I got, Katie said, holding up a bright pink shish. IRT with paw prints on it. That's nice, Katie. Check out what I found. I put the hat on and took a bow. I don't know why, it just felt right. That looks nice on you, sweetie, Mom said. I'm glad you found something you like. Let's get in line and pay for this stuff. Then we can go home. Maybe this shopping trip wasn't so bad after all. We found an open register and started unloading the carriage. Hello, the girl at the checkout counter said. Did you find everything you were looking for today? Absolutely, mom replied. The hat was the last thing to be rung up. Gee, there doesn't seem to be a price tag on this hat, the checkout girl said. Did you want to go grab another one like it? That was the only one, I said. There were no other hats like it on the rack. The girl sent another employee over to the hat section. Of course he came back saying the same thing that I had already told them. Didn't anyone listen? Next they called their manager over. She also went to the hat section and then came back and looked up something on her computer. 
I'm sorry for the delay, she explained, as she came over to the register and punched in a price for the hat. Thank you for shopping with us, enjoy the rest of your day. Then finally, we were out of the store. Chapter 3 Eureka 4th grade boys don't usually get this excited about hats, but there was something about that old thing that drew me in. In the car I noticed some writing stitched inside the hat. If trouble should arise, tip the cap and close your eyes. If your adventure goes away, it's time to finish up and say, for all that has come to be today in fancy force and grace, I tip my cap and send you back unto your rightful place. It looked like instructions, but I didn't know why anyone would need instructions on how to wear a hat. You take it and put it on your head. It sounded pretty easy to me. Yet reading those instructions sent a shiver down my spine. When we arrived at home, I helped my mom bring the bags inside. Then I went straight for the bathroom mirror so I could look at myself wearing the hat a bit longer. Sean, mom called. You need to start your homework. Can I wait and start it after dinner instead, please? I promise I'll work really hard on it then. No, the sooner you start your homework, the sooner it will be done and the more time you'll have for something fun afterward. So hop to it, fine. I sighed and pouted all the way up to my room. The only homework I had to do that night was study a list of spelling words. They were from a story that we had been reading in language arts about a boy who grew up on a farm. The book was okay but the spelling words that came with it were long and hard to memorize, I didn't understand why we had to practice spelling in the first place. I'm pretty sure that computers and cell phones check the spelling for us. Instead of wasting time, I got out my blocks and my box of action figures. I built a castle and pretended that it was Guar, dead by a fire-breathing dragon. He flew around and spit flames on people in the village below as they ran for their lives. Suddenly I heard the loudest and most terrifying sound ever. Shrees, I looked up and saw something flying around the room. It was going so fast that it was just a blur, but when it came to a halt I couldn't believe what I saw. There was a dragon in my room, a real dragon, he was dark brown with a green thorny back, just like the toy dragon on the castle. He wasn't very big but he sure seemed vicious. I ducked as he flew by. Then he came back around and headed right toward me. At that point it was time to run, I left my bedroom and booked it across the hallway. I slid down the staircase railing and ran through the living room. I'd like to think that I'm quick on my feet, but that fiery creature was just as a fast. He was only inches behind me as I ran another lap through the living room and dining room. When I got to the kitchen I almost slammed into mom as shish. He was cooking. Look out mom, I shouted as I ran past her. Ah? She turned around and screamed. Shrees, the dragon didn't try to attack her though. For some reason he only came after me and he wouldn't stop. Have you ever tried to outrun a dragon? Trust me it's not easy, my clothes smelled like rotten eggs and I definitely had dragon burn on my butt, I ran and hid under the dining room table, the dragon circled the room and let out a horrible sound, then he took a deep breath, blew a huge flame and set the dining room curtains on fire, this set the smoke detector off and then the sprinkler system kicked in, a second later I heard the front door open, I'm home, my dad greeted us as he came through the door, then he stood his shock watching the crazy scene, what on earth, daddy, Katie cried, as she came running down the stairs screaming, we need to get outside now, mom yelled, picking up Katie and rushing out the door, dad followed right behind them, mean, Eli was still hiding under the table, Shrees, believe me, if you had told me that one day I'd be cornered by a dragon, I would have thought you were kidding, but there I was cowering under the table while Lord Puff Puff stood guard, I needed a plan and fast, I knew if I could just create some sort of distraction then maybe I could get out, Thinking really hard, I went with the first thing that came to mind. I took off my pants and threw them across the room. When the dragon flew toward the clothes, I made a run for the door in my shirt and underwear. As I got outside and wiped the sweat from my forehead, I realized that I was still wearing my hat. I had no idea what would happen but I tipped the cap and recited the words that were written in it. For all that has come to be today in fancy force and grace, I tip my cap and send you back unto your rightful place. PTSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
They said goodbye and walked back over to their yard. We took a few more breaths and they headed back inside our house. The fern, a chur and everything else that was knocked over during my dragon battle was all back in order. Everything looks okay, Dad said, as he went and sat down in the living room. Katie snuggled up next to him. I have to finish what I was cooking, Mom said. But we will be talking about this over dinner, Sean. Okay if we must, I shrugged. Dinner in twenty minutes, she called, as she headed back into the kitchen. Chapter 4 Runaway dessert we had stuffed peppers, steamed carrots and mashed potatoes for dinner that night. Believe me, it tasted as bad as it sounds but I had bigger problems to deal with. Mom was all worked up about my hat and everything that had just happened. She would not stop talking about it. This is dangerous, Mom cried and blew her nose into a tissue. Sean could get hurt wearing this hat, we all could get hurt. Okay, let's settle down here and think for a minute, Dad said while scooping carrots onto his plate. There has to be a reasonable explanation for all, oh, if this, then he turned to me and the questioning began. Where in the store did you find this hat, Sean? I told you, it was on a rack with lots of other hats. I knew my parents were not going to let this go. Were there others like it, or was this the only one of its kind? This hat was different from the rest. There was something kind of mysterious about it. That's why I wanted it. Did the store clerk say anything when you went through the checkout line? Um, actually yes, Dad. She did saying something to me. She said thank you for shopping with us, enjoy the rest of your day. I thought it was funny but my parents were not laughing. There was a dragon in our house, mom gasped. A real dragon, the dragon could have eaten us, the house could have burned down, what if this happens again or what if something even worse happens, mom went on and on. I am concerned for the safety of this family, maybe we should go to the police. Honey, dad said trying to comfort her, what w? Will we even tell the police? Do we say that our son bought a strange hat and when he wears it monsters come out? Do you really think they'd believe us? Good point, Dad. Can you pass the potatoes? I gave him a big grin, but he ignored my request and went right on talking. Is there anything else you remember about the hat when you saw it at the store, Sean? Well, there are these strange words written inside it. They almost sound like directions. Directions? Dad asked looking very confused. Maybe you should go get your hat. I want to have a look at this. I didn't need any convincing, I ran up to my room grabbed the thing and I was back at the table in under a minute, I gave the hat to my dad and he studied the words very carefully. Sean, what were you doing before the dragon appeared? I built a castle with my blocks, then I pretended that the castle was guarded by a dragon, dad's eyes lit up, were you wearing the hat, yeah, why, that's it, mom raised an IBR, and what's it Joe, obviously the hat brings whatever you're imagining to life, he grinned like a kid in the candy store. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard, that's make-believe, that sounds like something right out of a fairy tale, mom snapped at him. Then she got up and carried the dirty dishes to the kitchen. She came back with a plate of chocolate chip cookies for dessert. How else can you explain a dragon in our house, dad said bursting at the seams, they don't just appear like flies or ants, Sean wore the hat and imagined a dragon attack. Right then and there a dragon appeared and attacked, mom still wasn't convinced. How can we be sure it's Sean's hat that caused this, well, I guess we've got to test the theory, he bit into his cookie and then turned to me, you're up buddy, wait a minute, mom cried, I don't want anyone to get hurt, Joe, what you're asking Sean to do could be dangerous, okay, okay, Sean, imagine something silly, keep weapons and vicious creatures out of it, all right, he turned back to my mom looking for her approval, Joe, I'm being serious, have you already forgotten about the dragon and the smoke detector and our curtains and, Jen, relax, it's just for a minute, and then Sean can recite the line and make it all go away, fine, she said shaking her head. With mom's approval, I put the hat on. Silly, I thought to myself as I grabbed a cookie and took a bite. Hum, the next thing I knew, the chocolate chip cookies had all jumped off the plate and were running around the room. The one in my hand escaped to join its buddies. Mommy do you see this, the cookies are running, Katie laughed so hard. Then she jumped out of her seat and chased after her dessert. I don't believe it, mom said. Wow this is really something, Dad exclaimed, acting like he just got a new toy. Sean, Katie shouted from the hallway, make it stop now, I want to eat my cookie but it's running too fast, sure Katie, I lock. D for all that has come to be today in fancy force and grace, I tip my cap and send you back onto your rightful place, PTSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
Kids at school are always showing off and talking about places they go. This hat would give me a chance to be really cool. Please let me bring it to school. No, please, just one time. No, I want to bring it for show and tell, Katie squealed. No one else in kindergarten has some. Anything like that, you're scared of the hat, I told her. No, I'm not. You were crying like a baby back when the curtains caught on fire. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Enough, Mom snapped. No one is bringing the hat to school, please, I moaned. Pretty please, with sprinkles on top, Katie begged. No, Mom and Dad shouted at once. Well, I guess that was that. Our parents had smashed our dreams. Thanks a lot, Mom and Dad. After the dinner dishes were washed and everything was cleaned up, Dad suggested doing some research to find out anything we could about the hat. Do not wear your hat for this, Sean, Dad said. We've had enough excitement for one day. Ah, uh, it would have been great, but I listened to Dad and took it off. We all sat down at the computer and looked up anything we could think of. We each had our own ideas as to where it came from. Katie thought the hat belonged to fairies that lived in the walls of the store. It was definitely not a believable stow. But, but hey, she's five. Mom still didn't want to believe anything that had happened so far. But she did suggest that maybe it had something to do with the type of hat that it was, and we should find out where it was made. Dad remembered a magic show he had been to as a kid and thought maybe the hat was part of a magic trick, and somehow got separated from the rest of the props and ended up on a rack in the store. He tried to find out everything he could about famous magicians and some of their special illusions. Dad's ideas made me think about fortune tellers and other performers who traveled the world with a big circus. Then I remembered that a circus came to our town last summer. Maybe the hat belonged to a circus employee and she was shopping in that store on her lunch break. She looked at her watch, knew she was running late, and rushed back to the circus, forgetting her hat. I thought about witches and wizards. Maybe the hat belonged to a wizard, but an evil presence emerged. Maybe there was a battle. Maybe the good wizard hid it in the store for safekeeping. Maybe the hat came from a different planet in a totally different galaxy. Maybe that planet got too close to its sun and blew up sending the hat flying through the atmospheres. Maybe it came to a stop on Earth, landing in a box that was on a cargo ship headed for the dock. The box was picked up by workers and delivered to the store. Clearly I had a better imagination than anyone else in my family. Ideas were zipping out of my head left and right and faster than I could speak them. If mom hadn't turned off the computer and told us it was bedtime, it's possible that my brain would have exploded. For the next few nights we tried to find out anything and everything we could about the hat. We went on the computer and read about magic and supernatural phenomenon. We went to the library and looked at old books about ancient traditions. We even went back to the store to see if any more hats like it had come in. Mom thought that was a silly idea. But Dad and I were on a mission and we stopped at nothing to find answers. We searched high and low for information but came up with absolutely nothing. Chapter 5 Dad's midlife crisis the week went by really fast. We still had no idea as to where this hat came from or why it did what it did, but I can tell you one thing. I was having so much fun with it. One night, I was thinking about aliens and a spaceship landed in our swimming pool. Another time I was looking at a book about insects and then every room of the house filled up with creepy crawly things. Oh, and it didn't stop there. No, things got better and better. One day a Tyrannosaurus came wandering up to the house. He sunk his teeth into the roof and ripped a piece of it off. Then he let out a mighty roar and the whole house shook. Katie was screaming. Mom was screaming even louder. Dad was swinging his golf club around trying to scare the beast away. You should have been there. It was awesome. Then there was the time when werewolves swarmed. The backyard. Believe me when I tell you that they're bigger than they look in storybooks. They howled at the full moon and dug through our trash cans. They left such a mess. And I know this sounds kind of crazy. But there was even a night when giant-sized vegetables came walking out of the garden and tried to attack us. I'm not kidding. I even got a nasty bruise on my arm from a very bossy eggplant. So if anyone tells you vegetables are good for you, don't believe them. The hat brought so much excitement, anything I imagined appeared right there in my house. It was beyond awesome and I really wanted was to tell my friends all about it. But every time I begged and pleaded to bring the hat to school I was told no, this just didn't seem fair to me. Seriously, I was a 10-year-old with an excellent imagination, and I couldn't help it that I found a magic hat at the store. Would you be able to leave the hat alone? Could you keep it a secret from your friends? I didn't think so. Anyway, Sunday arrive. Then that was the day we usually cleaned our house. That afternoon, Mom and Katie went outside to sweep the back porch and wash off the patio chairs. Dad went out to the garage to go through some boxes, and I was sent upstairs to clean my room. Everyone knows that it's much easier to unclean a room than to clean it. And it's more fun too, however. I dragged myself up to my room and started picking up the clothes that were all over my floor. 
it seemed like a never-ending pile. Once my clothes were picked up I moved on to my video games. I reached for one of them when I heard a car with a loud muffler and a deep thumping stereo pull into our driveway. I wondered who it was so I left my room and ran downstairs. I opened the front door to take a peek. Huh? I stopped in my tracks. I couldn't believe it. There was a really autumn sports car parked in our driveway and my dad was sitting in the driver's seat. Hi Sean, check out my ride. What do you think? Dad did you really buy that car? Well not exactly. I was about to ask more questions but then I saw it. Dad was wearing my hat. That didn't seem fair to me. He had set so many rules about the hat and now he had taken it and used it himself. Maybe he needed some rules set too. Dad, I shouted. Why were you using my hat? I know I shouldn't have done this, he admitted. I'm sorry I took your hat Sean. But I just got excited. When I put the hat on and pulled out of the driveway in my old sedan I imagined how cool a sports car would be. The next thing you know, I was driving one, it was a really cool car, way cooler than our normal car. It was bright red. The doors lifted up and the headlights looked evil. Come on Sean get in, let's go for a ride. So I got in and dad peeled the car out of the driveway. The Wilsons were sitting on their front porch staring at us as we took off down the street going a hundred miles an hour, well, okay, we weren't really going that fast but it felt like we were going super fast, isn't he? His great buddy, dad shouted. Yeah this is awesome dad but the road turns up ahead. Are we going to be able to make it, we're going so fast. I grabbed hold of the arm on the door and held on the best I could. I was a little scared but please don't tell anyone that. Let's find out, hang on, dad said and pulled the wheel tight to his left as we rounded a corner going wicked fast, yeah that was excellent, dad roared. Did you see that, did you see how we took that corner, yeah that was great, do you want to go home now, he asked, or do you want to see what this baby does on the highway, no, I don't want to go home yet, keep driving dad, we cruised down the highway passing every car we saw, hey dad what does the horn sound like, beep, dad hit the horn as we passed a big truck hauling logs, Beep beep, the truck driver honked his horn right back at us, I looked over at dad and he was smiling. I hadn't seen him that excited in a long time, we were having, gee a great afternoon together. We got off the highway and pulled into an empty parking lot near some old factory buildings. Dad why did you pull in here? I pulled in here so we could do this, hang on Sean, dad grabbed the wheel tight, and before I knew it, the car was spinning, aw doing donuts in a parking lot, in a sports car is excellent, ha ha, wow this is great, dad shouted. Yeah, I shouted back. After a few spins we left the parking lot and set it back onto the highway. Dad turned the radio on and blasted the music really loud as we drove back toward home. Hey I like this one, I said recognizing the next song that came on. Dad turned it up even louder and started singing along. Well really he was just making up his own words to the song. Wah, oh yeah, he belted it out. Dad that's not how it goes, oh come on the song needs a few squeals and do das wah, oh yeah oh yeah come on Sean add something to it and give me your best howl. Out I shouted and broke into laughter. We were singing and howling our way down the highway, when the radio shut off all of the sudden, and a light on the dashboard started blinking. What happened dad, what does that blinking light mean? Bummer, we're running out of gas, I hope we've got enough to get home on. So it turns out that even a make-believe sports car can run out of gas. I didn't want the day to end and neither did dad. But we headed for home taking one more corner at high speed and then back to our neighborhood. Dad pulled into our driveway and slammed on the brakes. There was a loud squeal of the tires as the car came to a stop. There were even smoking tread marks left in the pavement. Best afternoon ever, dad shouted as we high-fived each other. Of course all the excitement ended quickly when we saw mom and Katie standing on the steps shaking their heads at us. Joe what were you thinking? Mom asked dad as we got out of the car. What if someone saw you? Hi. Their neighbors, Mr. Wilson called to us and waved as he and Mrs. Wilson headed over our way. Great, mom grunted at dad. Someone did see you. That's quite a car, Mr. Wilson said, reaching our driveway. It must have cost a fortune. Actually it belongs to a co-worker of mine. Dad lied. He's out of town and asked me to take good care of his car for him. Wow, that is really special, Mr. Wilson said, walking around the car, looking down at its tires and peering into the windows. I'd sure like to go for a ride in this beauty, Jennifer. Mrs. Wilson got right up in my mom's face. I'll make some tea and cookies for us while the men go for a drive. Oh gee, Gladys that is so kind of you but we actually have somewhere we need to be in a few minutes so I guess we'll have to take a rain check on that. Oh, what do you have going on this evening? Oh well. There's an event at the school tonight for Sean's class. Really, I didn't hear anything about this, Gladys said. I'm a always notified if there is a weekend event. Usually I'm asked to provide snacks for such occasions. Mom was caught in a bad lie. You see Mrs. Wilson is the head cook in the school's cafeteria. And she makes it her business to know everything that goes on at Birchwood Elementary. Well, this was something planned by the parents, Mom went on. 
and we've all signed up to bring a dish. That must be why you weren't contacted. We really need to get going now, but thanks for stopping by. The nosy duo walked back to their house. Do you realize what you've done? Mom turned and glared at Dad. I thought she was going to explode. I'm sorry, dear, Dad explained. Look, I know I got a little carried away, but you've got to admit it's a pretty sweet ride. He gave my mom the puppy dog eyes. Humph, I'll give you that, but it doesn't mean that I'm okay with this, Mom replied, stomping her foot. Now pull that thing into the garage, say the stupid jingle, and turn it back into your old car before anyone else sees it. Later that evening, Mom made our absolute favorite dish ever, macaroni and cheese from a box. She scooped some onto plates for Katie, me, and herself, and then she brought the rest back to the kitchen. Hey, what about me? Dad asked. I love that stuff too. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom responded sarcastically. I only scoop food for responsible people. I was so surprised. Dad was even more surprised. I kind of felt sorry for him. But I also wish I had had a camera so I could have captured the look on his face. Chapter 6 The ins and outs of fourth grade The night went by so fast. It was time to get up and get ready for school but I was nice and comfortable under the covers. I didn't want to move. Good morning Sean. Mom knocked on my door. It's time to get up. Ah, I dragged myself out of bed and got dressed. I smelled maple syrup as I came downstairs. Eat up quickly, Sean. The school bus will be here soon. Mom handed me a plate of pancakes. I gulped them down and D ran out to catch the bus just making it. This happened a lot on Mondays. The bus pulled into the school parking lot and let us off. I headed right inside the building and up the stairs to Mrs. Bodine's classroom. Mrs. Bodine is the toughest teacher I've ever had. She gives us tons of homework and always pushes us to try harder. I don't like tons of homework but I really do like Mrs. Bodine. She writes on the board with colored chalk, and she plays music while we do journal writing. But the greatest thing about Mrs. Bodine is that her jokes are so lame that you can't help but laugh. Good morning everyone, Mrs. Bodine announced as the school bell rang and we all settled into the classroom. I have a question for you as we start the day. Who is a chicken's favorite composer? Bach, get it? Bach, 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 yup, she really said that. Anyway, we have a big classroom and my desk is right in the front row. The bad thing about sitting right up front is that you get called on a lot. But the good thing. Gee about sitting right up front is that you're closer to the door when the bell rings. Johnny Summers and Walter Reynolds are my best friends, and they've been my best friends for a long time. They are both in my class, but Mrs. Bodine says we talk too much when we sit together. So as you can probably imagine, our desks are far apart. I sit up front. Johnny and Walter both sit in the back row, but there's a girl named Susie Leonards who sits in between them. I wish we could all sit together but that's okay. Johnny is on my soccer team, and Walter lives a few streets down from me, so I get to see them a lot. The first subject of the day was language arts. We were starting a new story, and Mrs. Bodine handed out a copy of the book to each of us. This is a story about a brother and sister who go on a sailing adventure with their grandfather but get lost out on the high sea. Every year I do this book with the class, and most of the students have really enjoyed it. It also ties into what we'll be doing in Social Street. You guys later, Mrs. Bodine read the beginning paragraph out loud, and then she told us to read the rest of the chapter as homework. Next, we went over the new list of spelling words and wrote sentences for each one. Now you've heard me say before that I don't believe in spelling words, but I tried to write my sentences as fast as I could so at least I wouldn't have to do it as homework. Okay time is up on writing, Mrs. Bodine walked up and down through the rows of desks. What you didn't finish in class will be homework. Now, why don't we all get up for a moment and stretch, and then I will have you get out your math books, please. We were given a worksheet with multiplication problems on it. Science class came after math, and we were starting the lesson on weather. We watched a short video about cloud formations, and then played a fun trivia game to see what we remembered. I can tell you were all paying attention. Great job, everyone, Mrs. Bodine said. She let us go to lunch a few minutes early. I grabbed the lunchbox my mom had packed me and headed to the cafeteria. The great thing about bringing your own food is that you get to avoid the long lines in the lunchroom. I went straight to get a table, and I saved a couple seats for Johnny and Walter. I went hiking with my cousins over the weekend, Walter mumbled while stuffing a hot dog into his mouth. What did you guys do? I went to work with my dad, Johnny bragged. His construction company is working on a new building, and I got to tag along there. I carried boards and stirred paint up. My dad even gave me $20 for helping him. It was great, every Monday, I heard an exciting story about something Walter did over the weekend or somewhere Johnny had been. I knew I had something even better to share. I had held my tongue for over a week, but I was about to burst, the secret was coming out. My dad and I took a drive in a really sweet sports car yesterday, I said, grinning ear to ear. No way, Johnny shouted with a mouthful of food. When did your dad buy a sports car, Walter asked. 
Well, it's kind of a long story. My dad didn't really buy a sports car, but we had one for a little while. Did he steal it? Walter asked. What? No. Then what are you talking about? Shani added. Okay, guys, look, you have to promise not to say a word about this to anyone. I'm serious. Deal, Walter said. Deal, Johnny shouted even louder. Then we all fist bumped. So this all started when I went to the department store with Katie and Mom. I told them all about my hat and the excellent things that had gone on at home. I can't believe you waited all this time to tell us about it, Walter shouted. What if we came over to your house? Could you make something great happen while we're there? Johnny asked. Hello, boys. We looked up to find Mrs. Wilson standing by our table holding a plate of cafeteria fries. It seems as though we made more fries than necessary today. There are plenty of extras. Would you like us? Oh, oh yeah, Johnny said and took the plate from her. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson, Walter added. She smiled and walked back to the kitchen. Isn't this great? Johnny asked me. I don't know. Mrs. Wilson lives right across the street from me, and she is always coming over and being really nosy. There is something weird about her. What do you mean? Walter asked. We just got free food that's not weird, that's great, now tell us more about your hat. What else did you make happen? Johnny and Walter tried to change the subject back to my hat, but I couldn't help feeling that Mrs. Wilson was on to my secret. After all she had showed up right after the dragon appeared in my house and again after me and my dad's excellent drive, I wondered if the fries were just an excuse to listen in on us. The bell rang for lunch to end, and the three of us headed outside for recess. Both Johnny and Walter kept talking about my hat, but I had to stop them. Listen we can't talk about the ha. To hear at school, I wasn't even supposed to tell you guys about it, I whispered to them. But why, no one can hear us talking about it, it's loud out here, Johnny said. Tell me more about the werewolves, did you get up close enough to pat one? No, I didn't get up close enough to pat one, they were huge and vicious looking, plus my parents made me stay inside the whole time. That's too bad, Walter said. I wonder if werewolves like to play fetch, that would be awesome, alright, if you guys come over to my house I promise I will show you the hat, but we cannot talk about it anymore at school, my friends were disappointed. However they agreed to keep it quiet, and we made our way over to the swings. Susie Leonards walked by the swings and waved to me as I was pushing off the ground. I stopped and waved back. Oh look, it's Sean's girlfriend, Johnny yelled. She's not my girlfriend, sure she's not, I didn't like it when Johnny and Walter teased me about it but I did kind. Of like Susie, she wore her hair in a long ponytail, and she carried a superhero backpack. Susie was also the only girl I knew who could make braces look cool. The bell rang. We jumped off the swings and lined up to go back into the classroom. Mrs. Bodine was waiting for us, and she assigned a new project that sounded great, we're beginning a new chapter in social studies. We'll be discussing the age of exploration and learning about the famous explorers, she said with excitement, and wrote explorers on the board with green chalk. Who were these people, and what does it mean to be an explorer? Sean, what do you think? I wanted to come up with something awesome. I imagine boarding a spaceship headed for Saturn with a team of the world's best scientists. We'd put a flag on one of Saturn's rings to let everyone know we had been there. Then we'd return to Earth and share our findings with the authorities. We'd be given medals for our bravery, and we'd be talked about on all the news channels. I tried to s. Peek but I got nervous and it didn't come out sounding as cool as I wanted it to. Space travel. Scientists, ah. I sunk down in my seat. The class laughed hysterically. Space travel is very important, Mrs. Bodine responded. These famous men we'll be learning about are also very important. They traveled around the world exploring new territories. You will each do a project on one of them and present it in class. I think you will find this interesting. Mrs. Bodine walked to the back of the classroom. She put a large map down on the big table and had us gather around it. She pointed to different routes that some of the explorers took. Are there any questions? Can we work in teams? This is an individual project, Mrs. Bodine answered. Is there extra credit we can do for this? Do we get to choose who we write about? Where are we going to find all the information for the reports? Can we have a pizza party on presentation day? The questions kept coming. Some of the kids were really interested in this project. Some of the kids complained but I thought school projects were a lot more fun than doing worksheets and taking tests. This assignment is due Friday. I will give you plenty of time in class every day this week to work on it, Mrs. Bodine said. You can find information online and you can check books out of the school library. In addition to doing an oral presentation, I expect you to write at least one page worth of material as well. Then she picked up a little bucket and started walking around the classroom. This pail contains slips of paper. Each slip of paper has the name of an explorer on it. Whoever you draw out of the pail is the one you will report on. She came to me, and I pulled out a name. Ferdinand Magellan Chapter 7 
one big fart in an angry giraffe once everyone had picked an explorer, Mrs. Bodine brought us down to the school library to use the computers and get information for our reports. I sat at a table with Johnny and Walter. We looked through a big book and took some notes, or at least we tried to. I pulled a notebook out of my backpack, but when I dropped it onto the table it hit my pencil and sent it flying. Of course Johnny and Walter thought that was so funny that they had to try bouncing their pencils off the table. Johnny's pencil went flying and hit Lisa in the back of the head. Cut it out, Lisa said, throwing the pencil back at us. Walter's pencil just landed on the floor. As he bent down to pick it up he farted. Ha ha dude that stunk, Johnny said fanning his hand back and forth and laughing hysterically. Ha ha ha, Walter was laughing at himself. He let it rip, I whispered trying not to break into loud uncontrollable giggles. No, Johnny replied, still laughing hard and almost falling out of his seat. He cut the cheese, he tooted his horn, I belted out, not able to stay quiet anymore. He released the beast, Johnny shouted. I got one, Walter said laughing so hard he couldn't gee. T his words out. I, I, ha ha ha, okay boys, that is enough, I'm afraid that this is not going to work, Mrs. Bodine said as she walked toward our table. She sent Walter to work with Andrea and Tyler on the other side of the room. You what stinks, Andrea asked as Walter joined her group. Oh that's horrible. Ah, time and distance was no match for the mighty fart, it lingered on and on. Mrs. Bodine sent me over to join Josh and Susie. What about me, Johnny asked, starting to calm down. Who am I sitting with now? I think you will be best sitting right there by yourself, Mrs. Bodine said with a smile. Bummer, I felt sorry for Johnny having to sit by himself. At the same time, I knew if I stayed at the table with him I never would have gotten any work done. Besides it was great sitting with Susie. The afternoon went by quickly. Before we knew it, it was time to pick up and get ready to go home. I left the school with a backpack full of books, I had so many ideas for my explorer presentation and I was deep in thought about it on the bus ride home. Hi Sean how was your day, my mom asked as I got home and went into the kitchen to grab a quick snack. It was good. Oh and the most awesome part of the day was when Walter farted in the library, I'm talking a powerful one. It reeked but it was hilarious too. Johnny and I fell out of our seats laughing. I tell you mom if they graded farts like they grade storms it would have been at least a category 4. Well isn't it nice to know that my son is so educated on farts, please tell me you learned something more important than that today. Well, Mrs. Bodine gave us a new assignment. We'll be doing projects on the explorers and writing papers about them. The presentation will be fun but the writing part might be hard. Then I had a great idea. Hey mom will you do the writing part for me? Sure, and I'll serve chocolate cake and candy for dinner tonight. Really? What do you think? Mom replied with an Evie. Ill grin on her face. If you haven't figured out by now the gift of sarcasm runs in my family on that note. I gathered my books and papers and headed upstairs. As I walked toward my room I heard strange voices coming from Katie's room down the hall. I went over by her door and listened. Oh Mrs. Pepper you look so pretty today. Where did you get that those fancy shoes? Oh why thank you Katie. I bought these shoes in France, it's a wonderful place, you should visit there sometime. Oh well maybe I will. Would you like some tea? Oh yes please. Would you ladies stop gabbing about shoes and tea in France and pass the stupid cookies already? Well somebody is a big grouch today, Mr. Giraffe you are not being very polite. I'm sorry Katie. I'm just so hungry. I want a cookie but you ladies just keep on yapping and yapping, it's impossible to get a word in here. I am sorry about that, here's a cookie, is that better? Yum that's much better. Thank you Katie, you are. Be very welcome but next time remember your manners. Now Mrs. Monkey and Mr. Bear, can I interest either of you in some tea? Yes indeed, thank you Katie. Two sugars for me dear if you please, who were all these people in Katie's room, then I had a thought. Oh no please tell me it's not what I think it is, I mumbled to myself. I really hope Katie didn't take my hat, I knocked on her door. Come in, yup, it was exactly what I thought it was, grr, hi Sean, your sister made tea. Would you like to join us? The big teddy bear was talking. Come sit next to me Sean, exclaimed the life-size doll patting her hand on the chair next to her. It's just a lovely afternoon isn't it? My jaw dropped. Katie's dolls and stuffed animals were all sitting up. They were chatting, they were sipping tea and eating oatmeal raisin cookies. Katie, I screamed. You took my hat, you went in my room and took my hat. Well the door was open and your hat looked lonely, Katie whined, and Dia wanted to use it so I took it so I could have a tea party with my dolls. Give me back my hat Katie. I reached toward her and tried to grab the hat off her head. No, she screamed and backed up. You use it all the time and daddy used it and I want to turn too. Katie I'm going to go tell mom. Mom, Katie won't. No Sean, no, don't tell mommy, she cried. Don't tell mommy. I just want to use it for a little bit. Please, I promise I'll give it right back when I'm done. I took a deep breath. 
I was definitely angry with her but I didn't have time to argue. I needed to work on my project. Okay Katie, you can use the hat. Just remember the words to end it and put it back in my room when you're done. I left Mrs. Pepper's tea party and went to my room to start my homework. I wrote five sentences about Magellan. I thought it looked good. My arm was tired from all that writing though and I needed a break. I got up and stretched for a few minutes before sitting back down to work. Hum. I said out loud to myself. I could use my blocks and put together a ship like the one Magellan traveled on. I got right on that and built what I thought was a masterpiece. With that done, I went back to writing until dinner time. After dinner, I had mom look over what I had written. Sean, this is very good work. I think Mrs. Bodine will be pleased. I like the ship you built too. I'll find a box for you to put it in. That way it will get to school safe. Mom left my room and then came back with a box big enough to handle my construction. With that done, I pulled out the new book we got in language arts and read the first chapter. It was a good story so far. I had a feeling I was going to enjoy it a lot more than the last book we read. After that, I was starting to get tired. I was so tired that I didn't even want to play a video game that night. I put all my books and papers back into my backpack. I made a quick trip to the bathroom to brush my teeth and then got right into bed. I fell awful. EP within minutes. Chapter 8. Peer pressure, maid service, and bickering parents. Oh no, the week went by very fast. It was already Thursday, and Mrs. Bodine let us spend the whole afternoon in the library to gather last-minute information for our presentations. I was proud of what I had put together. Then I looked over at Susie, and she had three times more stuff than I did. Susie, how did you get that much written so fast? It's not really that much writing. If you want I can take a look at your paper and give you some pointers. I handed her my paper and watched her as she read it. I started daydreaming that I was a superhero and rescued her from an evil wizard who held her captive in a dungeon. This isn't bad but you might want to add a picture or a map. Sean, Sean. Hello Earth to Sean, oh sorry. I snapped out of my daydream and back to reality. Yeah thank you, that's a good idea. I got up right away and went over to the reference section. I was flipping pages in the big ATL. I was looking for a map when Johnny came over to me. You know what I was thinking? I've got a great idea for your presentation. What's your idea? I whispered, hoping Mrs. Bodine didn't catch us talking. You should bring that hat to school tomorrow. I told you I'm not allowed to use it outside the house. You keep saying that but me and Walter are starting to think that you made this whole story up. Oh come on, don't give me such a hard time. The hat is real. Everything I said about it is true, well if you don't bring it tomorrow, you're either a liar or a chicken. He punched me in the shoulder and went back to his table. Okay it's that time, Mrs. Bodine announced. Put everything away and line up please. I went back to the table, grabbed my stuff and loaded my backpack. As I headed outside for the bus Johnny caught up to me. Remember the hat tomorrow dude, he said, and ran to get in his bus line. Johnny had definitely given me something to think about, if I wore tea. He had to school my presentation could go down in history as the most thrilling event to ever happen at Birchwood Elementary. Plus, maybe then Johnny would stop nagging me. But I also knew that if I brought the hat to school, I'd probably be grounded until I was 73. My brain was so jumbled with thoughts on the bus ride home that I almost missed my stop. When I got off the bus and headed for the house, I noticed a big truck parked in our driveway. The logo on the truck read, we do landscaping. A man was mowing our lawn and there were two other men trimming bushes. All of them had the We Do Landscaping logo on their jackets. I found even more surprises when I opened the front door and went inside. Weird jazz music was playing on the stereo and a maid was mopping the floor. I didn't ever remember us having a maid. Then a butler came out of the laundry room holding a basket full of clothes and I know we had never had a butler before. Mrs. Phillips, he spoke. I did a load of towels, the butter are all folded and I'm going to put them away right now and then I'll be back to do a load of whites. Oh thank you very much Charles, here's your iced tea Mrs. Phillips. A woman in a cook's apron brought my mother a drink. Mom what is going on and who are all these people? Oh, hi there Sean, she said looking a bit embarrassed. I'm sorry you had to see this, and there it was. My mother was wearing my hat, ah clearly hat rules needed to be set for everyone in this family. Seriously mom? I was so surprised that I really didn't know what to say to her. Catching her using the hat was pretty hilarious, especially since she was breaking her own rules. What I didn't understand though is why, out of everything that could be imagined, my mom chose house cleaning and room service. Oh I'm sorry Sean. I guess I got a little carried away. Here you can have your hat back. I know I shouldn't have taken it, that's okay. It looks like you enjoy the hat too mom, I can't deny it. The hat is exciting. 
I was actually starting to feel like a kid again when I put it on and started imagining all the things I wanted, and I thought Katie's tea party was lame. Um, so you went with gardeners and maids, I asked her. Come on, mom, you can do better than that. What about pirates or everything turning into cheese? Okay, she laughed. I get it. Suddenly we heard the front door open, and mom's face turned red. Mommy, we're home, Katie exclaimed as she ran into the living room. Dad entered right after Katie. Honey, why did you call a landscaping company? I told you I would. He paused after seeing mom's make-believe housecleaning staff. Well now what's going on here? Nothing, nothing at all, mom blurted out. For all that has come to be today in fancy force and grace, I tip my cap and send you back unto your rightful place. PTSSSSSSSSS. Pop, she tossed the hat back to me. Clearly pretending none of that happened. How was dance class? Mom asked Katie. It was great. We learned a new step today. It goes tap tap S-H-U-F-F-E-L tap tap. Katie danced across the room. That sounds like a lot of fun. It was fun and then daddy came and picked me up and on the way back we stopped at the store and bought some ice cream treats. That sounds great, I shouted. Can I have one now? Sure you can buddy. Dad opened the bag he was carrying and handed me a delicious frozen snack. I want to eat mine now too, Katie said. Here you go pumpkin. Dad smiled and handed her an ice cream too. That just sounds like a nice afternoon pick me up, mom exclaimed. I'll take one as well. Well hold on just a moment, dad said with a smirk on his face. I somehow recall a conversation recently about responsibility. Now how did that go? Dad was on a roll. I could tell that he was proud of himself too. Oh yeah that's right, he went on. I used the hat and you didn't give me any mac and cheese saying you only served responsible people. Hum now you us. And the hat. Well I don't think that was very responsible so I don't think I should give you any ice cream. Ha ha, mom snorted. Very funny. At least I used the hat for something practical. Oh we'll find out just how practical that was when Roger and Gladys come over saying they saw a landscaping truck here and would love to get the business card because, lo and behold, they need lawn work done too. So what? I'm pretty sure maintenance trucks aren't uncommon in the neighborhood. A sports car on the other hand, now that might turn a few heads. And by the way, I wouldn't have had to use Sean's hat if someone had done the yard work like they promised. I told you I'll take care of it over the weekend when I have more time. As for the hat, it's an opportunity to act out our wildest dreams. Is a clean floor your wildest dream, hun? Katie and I giggled. I'm not even going to respond to that, mom said as she got up and headed for the kitchen, not willing to admit defeat. Oh and buy tea. He way, everything is gone now that you recited the jingle. So you still have to wait for me to do the yard work, dad shouted back to her. Um hum, whatever you say Joe, mom gave a fake smile. Dinner in an hour. Ah uh, parents you've got to love them chapter 9, some rules were meant to be broken Friday morning arrived, and that meant presentation day. Mom made waffles for breakfast, and I could smell them all the way up in my room as I was getting ready for school. I definitely wanted some of those. I picked up my backpack and the box with my ship and hurried out of my bedroom, hoping I'd have enough time to eat before the bus came. But then I hesitated as I reached the stairs, remembering what Johnny had said the other day. I went back to my room and grabbed the hat. I stuffed it into my backpack, raced downstairs and gobbled up two waffles with blueberries and cream. Delicious. Breakfast was done and I was off the meet the bus. The morning bell rang and we all settled into the classroom. Mrs. B. Odin took attendance and then we had language arts followed by math and science. The morning dragged on but finally the lunch bell rang. Did you bring it? Johnny asked me as our class walked toward the cafeteria. Yes, but I'm nervous about using it. I don't know exactly what will happen and I could get in a lot of trouble. I knew it. You're such a chicken, he said and ran to get in the lunch line. After lunch and recess, we headed back into the classroom for social studies. Okay, let's get right to the main event, Mrs. Bodine announced. While someone is presenting, I ask that the rest of you are respectful and give them your undivided attention. Listen carefully and feel free to take some notes. There will be a chance to ask questions after each presentation. With that said, Josh Dillard, you are up first. Josh talked about Christopher Columbus and held up a big painting he had made showing Columbus's fleet of ships. Then he went over to a globe that was sitting on a table and pointed to where Christopher Columbus sailed. At first his presentation was interesting, but Josh mumbled a lot. There were even a few times when I couldn't hear what he was saying. Then I just got tired of listening to him. Thank you, Mrs. Bodine said when Josh was done. Now are there any questions? Andrea raised her hand. What was your favorite part of this project? My favorite part was when it was all done. Everyone laughed. If you could be an explorer, where would you want to explore? Walter asked. I think I would want to explore somewhere that had a jungle and wild animals. Everyone clapped, and then he went back to his seat. Next, Susie Leonards did her presentation. My report is on Marco Polo. 
I drew this map showing where he traveled, she taped a big map of Asia on the board, I made you each a copy, and everyone gets a little ship that I made out of clay, you can put it on the map, it's more fun to follow along that way, she was right, it was much more fun to look at the map when you had props to go with it, ah Susie, she was awesome, well done, Mrs. Bodine told her when she finished, are there any questions for Susie, can we keep these little clay ships, Tyler asked, sure, would you want to be a world explorer, Lisa asked, of course I would, there are so many places I would love to travel to, in fact I've started a list and I'll check the places off as I visit them, Susie headed back to her seat, great job, I told her as she walked by, thanks, she said, smiling at me, I could hear Johnny and Walter snickering in the background, Walter and Johnny there is a lot of chatter going on back there, Mrs. Bodine said in her serious teacher voice, you can come up next Walter, Walter stumbled up to the front of the room, he kept forgetting what to say, and even dropped his paper, it was kind of funny but I felt bad for him too, can I start over, that is fine, Mrs. Bodine said, but I could tell she was not pleased, Walter finished, and Andrea Hill did her report. After that Mrs. Bodine gave us five minutes to stand up and stretch, and then we went back to the presentations. Tyler did his report followed by Thomas, Johnny and Lisa. It looked as though I was going to be last, and I was starting to get a little nervous. I would say that I was getting stage fright, but we didn't have a stage in the classroom, so I guess that didn't really make sense. I reached into my backpack to pull out my paper, and there was my hat staring back at me. Do I use it or not? The pressure was on. If I used the hat, my presentation would be better than the others for sure. I bet everyone would get a kick out of it. Especially Walter and Johnny. It might even shut Johnny up. However, mom and dad had been loud and clear about me never bringing the hat to school. What would you do? The more I thought about this, it seemed to be in the best interest of fourth graders everywhere. Their education was important, and I had an opportunity to make it better. Surely, my parents couldn't argue with that. I put the hat on my head, grabbed my paper and the model ship, and stood up in front of my class. Sorry mom and dad, I whispered to myself. Chapter 10. The Trinidad sets sail, again, my project is on Ferdinand Magellan. He was born in Portugal, and moved to Spain as an adult. He left on an expedition from Spain in 1519, with a fleet of five ships. He was on a ship called the Trinidad. I pulled the ship I had built out of the box, and put it up on a table for the class to see. As I spoke, it began to get very windy outside, and a strong breeze came through the classroom. I gripped my paper tight and almost lost my balance. He sailed down the Atlantic Ocean toward the bottom of South America. He took his ships through a narrow passage of water that is known today as the Strait of Magellan. They came out into the Pacific Ocean. Magellan and his crew were running very low on supplies so they docked the ship in the Philippines. I pointed to a map and was ABO. Booked to show everyone where the Philippines were when it blew right off the wall. In fact several pictures and maps were blown off the wall, even some of the chairs and desks were moving around, it was getting harder for anyone to sit still. Hey what's going on here? Walter shouted, as his desk slid over and slammed into a bookshelf, books, papers and backpacks were flying through the air and the whole building started to shake, my ship slid off the table smashing into pieces on the floor, in a matter of seconds a real ship, or more like a life-size version of the one I built, came crashing through the door. The room filled with water and what was once a fourth grade classroom now looked more like the wide open sea. Help screams were coming from every direction. We were all treading water and I knew my classmates were scared for their lives. I had to do something about that. I saw a rope hanging from the side of the ship and quickly grabbed hold of it. I climbed up the side and shouted to my FR. INDS, everyone get on the ship. Then I threw the rope back down and offered a hand to help everybody up. By the time my whole class was on board the wind was whipping and the waves were getting stronger. The vessel rocked back and forth. We held on tight, but a few of the kids were looking a little green. I'm going to be sick, Andrea cried. I think I am too, Walter mumbled. Blah, Mrs. Bodine pulled a wet cell phone out of her pocket and tried to make a call for help. I doubted that she was going to get any service out there in the middle of the ocean but she sure tried. I wanted my class to have a good time but most of the kids seemed sick or scared. What could I do to change this? What would Magellan have said to his crew? Then I got an idea. I gave anyone a job to do. Josh, you and Thomas secure the sails. Mrs. Bodine, grab the helm and try to keep us steady. Walter, you and Johnny search the ship for supplies, food, tools, weapons, bring back anything you find. Everyone else, keep a look out for land and enjoy the ride. And we were off. It seemed as though my presentation had turned into a field trip. Fourth graders out on an adventure in the middle of the deep blue sea. What could be better? Sean, Tyler shouted. I'm starting to see land but it doesn't look like Birchwood Elementary School. 
The people there don't look like students. It looks like they have bows and arrows. What are we going to do? I wondered what the local people would do if we came ashore on their land. Would they be really friendly and show us around or yell and tell us to leave? Would they cook us dinner or would they try to eat us for dinner? I'll admit I was a little scared but at the same time this was the greatest adventure I had ever been on. I wasn't ready for it to end yet. So I threw down the anchor, jumped off the ship and trudged through the shallow water. My classmates followed right behind me as we came to a beach and a rocky bank. It must have been part of the Philippines because it looked Jew. Same like the pictures in one of the books I checked out of the library. Far back on the land I could see a large group of strangers. One man stepped out in front of the group and walked toward us. I wondered if he was the leader. Dripping wet, I lifted my arm and offered a friendly handshake. Hello. My name is Sean Phillips. I'm here on an expedition with the fourth grade class of Birchwood Elementary School. We've come to explore your land. The leader put his hand out and shouted. I had no idea what he was saying. He must have been speaking some other language, and I didn't think anyone in my class spoke that language, but I could tell that it did not sound friendly. He turned around to his people and shouted again. Then he raised his bow and arrow above his head. Suddenly, all of the natives were shouting and charging toward us just like you'd see in the movies. At that point, Susie ran and hid behind a big rock. Everyone else except me, Walter and Johnny, rushed back through the water toward the ship. Mrs. Bodine followed right behind them and helped everyone back on board. Clearly, not everybody in the class was up for an epic duel, but my best friends and I were. Bring it on, Johnny wailed, as he pulled a sword from inside his jacket. Where did you get that? I asked him. I found it on the ship when you told me to look for supplies, I thought it might come in handy, he was right. It did. Johnny was able to knock a few of the locals down with his sword as they got close to him. This is great, he hollered. Sean there is a lot more of them than there are of us, Walter shouted as he dodged an arrow headed toward him. We've got this, I said, trying to encourage my friends, though I'll admit I wasn't so sure about it. The natives got closer and closer. We stepped backward and dodged the arrows they were shooting at us. After a while Johnny gave up trying to use the sword, and we just ran across the beach to get away as fast as we could, our hearts were pounding faster th. And ever, it was a combination of fear and excitement just like when we played video games, only this was real life, Johnny fell down in the shallow water but got right back up and kept running. I slipped a few times too but I wasn't about to give up. I picked up one of the arrows that had landed near me and threw it back, hitting one of the natives in the arm. Nice work, Johnny yelled as he ran past me. Uh guys, I don't know about this, Walter screamed as he fell backward just missing an arrow that was aimed at his head. Yeah I know what you mean Walter. These guys are a lot bigger stronger and faster than we are, Johnny shouted. I don't know how much longer I can hang on either Sean. Hey you're the one that begged me to bring the hat to school today. Besides we face danger like this in our video games all the time. Yeah but when things get this bad we just hit the reset button, he had a point. Okay guys, I shouted to Walter and Johnny. Maybe we can throw them off B. Bug changing directions. On the count of three let's turn around and head back to ship before they shoot any more arrows. But then I heard screaming. Sean, help me. I looked around to see where the screaming was coming from. Oh no, it was Susie. She was surrounded by a group of angry natives. This was bad. This was very very bad. Well, I had I'd always wanted to rescue a damsel in distress. I guess now was my chance. I left my two best friends to outrun the natives and defend the fourth grade honor and I ran toward Susie. I was stopped by the men who guarded her. They knocked me off my feet and pushed me down to the ground but I wasn't about to give up without a fight. Plotting my next move, I remembered back to the time with the dragon in the dining room. A distraction was just what I needed now. However, taking my pants off probably wasn't the best idea. Instead I scooped up some sand and threw it in the men's eyes. This gave me just enough time to get on my feet and reach Susie before th. EY caught up with me. Susie, are you okay? I called to her. I'm fine Sean, she insisted. Let's get back to the ship, good plan, I told her. I wish we could have talked with these people but they're speaking some weird language. They might be speaking Malay Sean, she told me. That's the language that was spoken in the Philippine Islands during the time of Magellan. Didn't you learn that when you were doing your research? Are you kidding me Susie? I'm trying to save your life here and you're going to give me a history lesson? Girls, I just didn't get them sometimes. I'm sorry Sean, thank you for coming to my rescue but look out behind you. I turned around to see seven big men all armed and all looking pretty angry. The tallest one said something I didn't understand. My guess it was probably Malay for, you're in deep trouble kid, Sean, Susie whispered to me. What do we do now? There was only one thing we could do. I closed my eyes and tipped my hat, for all tea. 
Had has come to be today, in fancy force and grace, I tip my cap and send you back unto your rightful place, PTSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, thank you for getting here so quickly. Please sit down, Mr. Braxton pointed to some big chairs. Mrs. Bodine, I'd like you to join us as well. Sean, why don't you wait in the hallway, so that is my story. And here we are, back on the bench where we started. What do we do now, you ask? I guess we wait, as I mentioned before. This is the first time mom and dad have been called to the school and they sure looked mad. I'll admit I'm starting to feel worried. I hope Mrs. Bodine tells them that the class had a lot of fun and that no one got hurt. I get up and walk over near the office. I put my ear to the wall and try to make out what they're saying. I assure you Mr. Braxton that Sean did not mean to scare any of the children or put anyone in danger. My dad says, you see the hat is amazing. Whatever you are imagining comes to life when wearing this thing. I'll be honest I've used it myself. Maybe that influenced Sean. We have set down some rules about when and where he can use this hat, mom explains. He was not supposed to bring it to school, and we certainly will speak to him about this, but I know he wouldn't have caused a scene intentionally. Mr. Braxton, I know this is hard to believe, Mrs. Bodine says, but I was there and I must say it did get the entire class excited. Maybe Sean knew this was all going to happen, or maybe he didn't. Regardless, he showed strong Lee. Durship skills, he assigned each of the students a task and more importantly, he kept us all safe. Well, in all the years I have been here at Birchwood Elementary, I have never witnessed or had to deal with a problem like this, Mr. Braxton explains. In other situations, a student might be expelled for causing such drama, let me assure you that this is not my first choice. Obviously Sean meant no harm, and up until today we have never had an issue with him. I do hope there is another option, Mrs. Bodine pleads. I'll admit I was frightened by this expedition, but I truly enjoy having Sean in my class. He's smart and puts in great effort. And up until today, I have never had any behavioral issues with him. Thank you, Dad says. We are very pleased to hear that. I hope we can work out something less severe than being expelled. Jen and I will see to it that this never happens again. Okay, Mr. Braxton sighs. Let's go talk to him. I run back to the bench and sit down. The door opens and the butt all come out, glaring at me. Sean Phillips, what are we going to do with you? Mr. Braxton asks. I shrug. Mrs. Bodine says you are a wonderful student. She also assures me that no one was hurt today. However, I'm in a difficult situation here. He scratches his head and pauses for a moment. I imagine that your classmates will go home and talk about what happened in school today. Phone calls from worried parents will follow. There are already several parents waiting outside, and I know they're going to have questions. It appears as though the media also found out about this, and who knows what kind of story they're going to come up with. What am I supposed to tell everybody, Sean? I didn't mean to scare anyone. I just thought it would make the other kids like my project better, and maybe it would make me seem cool. Believe me, Mr. Braxton. I put a stop to it when things got really dangerous. I'm sorry if I let things get out of hand, and I promise it won't happen again. Thank you, Sean. I appree. She ate you taking this seriously. I also hope you understand that as a principal, I have to set an example, and I cannot allow an event like this to take place without there being consequences. Excuse me, Mr. Braxton, a police officer approaches us. We have been through the entire school, and all is clear. Thank you, Officer Hatfield. Mr. Braxton shakes the man's hand, and then the group of police officers leaves the school. Mr. Braxton, all seems intact. There are no structural damages of any kind that we can see. A fireman in full garb says, that is good news, Mr. Braxton lets out a sigh of relief. Thank you for responding so quickly, Mr. Braxton turns back to me. As I was saying Sean, I am glad that everyone is safe and that there is no damage to the school. However, there still need to be consequences for this. Consequences, I think that's a mighty big word for fourth graders, but he insists. So, as the consequences of an exciting adventure, I have to stay after school each day for tea. The next two weeks and help clean the classrooms and hallways. I have lost recess privileges for a month, and if that isn't horrible enough, I'm not allowed on any school field trips for the rest of the year. Mr. Braxton gives the okay for all students to leave the gym and return to their classrooms. The buses pull up to the school at the normal time, and everyone heads outside like any school day. A news reporter is walking around trying to speak with some of the parents. Mom and Dad rush me toward the parking lot hoping not to be seen. The last thing we need is to be interviewed about this, Mom says as she opens the car door. Get in Sean and keep your head down. I get into the car and buckle my seatbelt. It's a very quiet ride home. I'm not sure what Mom and Dad are thinking. Then again, I may not even want to know. Chapter 12. And now for the news, the only stop we make on the way home is to pick up Katie at the babysitter's house. Hi Mommy. Hi Daddy. Hi Sean, Katie says as she gets into the car, usually it's just one of you picking me up. Well today you've got us all, Dad says. 
How was your day, pumpkin? It was so much fun. We got to wear smocks in kindergarten and paint on the big easels. Then we did numbers, and I knew them all. Then at daycare we played outside on the swing set, and then I played in the sandbox where I saw a butterfly, and then we went inside and played with blocks. Sometimes I get really annoyed at Katie when she goes on and on, but mom and dad haven't said a word to me since we left the school. So it's kind of nice to break the silence. We arrive at our house and mom and dad still aren't saying anything to me. The longer this silence goes on, the more I worry what my punishment here at home is going to be. Dad goes into the living room and turns on the television. He sits down on the couch and Katie joins him. Mom walks into the kitchen and gets out a pan to start cooking dinner. It's like nothing happened. Maybe I won't be punished, no, who am I key? PDING, mom and dad must be up to something but I don't want to stick around to find out. I quietly make my way up the stairs toward my room. Oh no, dad shouts. No, 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 this isn't good, Sean. I run back down to the living room, and mom runs in too. There we find dad and Katie staring at the television. Our school is on TV, Katie screams. Good afternoon, a man on the TV says. Thank you for joining us. I'm Fred Baker and this is the news. First up, it was a scary afternoon for many students at Birchwood Elementary School. Let's turn to Tori Hunter who is live on the scene with this story. Hello Fred, Tori says. I am standing outside Birchwood Elementary School. Though things look calm now, this was not the case just a few hours ago. The details are still coming in and being vetted but this is what we know so far. At around 1 p.m. an incident occurred here at the school and the entire student body was ushered into the gymnasium. Emergency crews responded and the school was put on L. Uckdown, which has since been lifted. I was told that school did let out at the normal time and the bus schedule was unaffected. Though many worried parents opted to pick their children up here. Mom and dad stare at the television in shock. Their jaws dropped. Should I offer to pick them up? No, that probably wouldn't go over too well. There have been reports of a pipe bursting, though not confirmed, and some witnesses claim to have heard glass breaking before the alarms went off, Tory Hunter reports. Earlier, I had a chance to speak with the head of police Sergeant William Monahan, who said that there didn't appear to be any damage to the school or signs of an outside threat. He also mentioned that they were looking into the possibility of this being a mishap with a student science project. First of all, wrong subject lady. Secondly, there was no mishap, everything worked just fine, so far, Principal Richard Braxton has not been available for comment, nor has he released a statement, this is to Re Hunter with Channel 7 News, now back to you in the studio, okay thank you, Fred says, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to learn about a new technology that helps prevent injuries on the football field, our sports reporter Ethan Michaels has the story, thank you for staying with Channel 7, dad turns off the television. My entire family gives me an evil stare. You've really done it now, mom snaps. I've got to get the pan off the stove before it burns, but we'll discuss this over dinner. Everyone go wash up. Mom is angrier than she has ever been. Should I go hide, or maybe I should just pack a bag and go stay at Walter's house for a while? Nah, that's an awful lot of work and I am way too hungry right now. Instead I go wash up and sit down at the table, knowing my punishment will come at any moment. Yum, rice and beans, I scoop myself a big plate. Sean, your father and I are very disappointed in you, mom starts in. Oh boy, here we go. Real. The mom, dad, I can explain. I don't want to hear it, Sean, dad says. We made it very clear that your hat was to stay at home. Not only did you disobey your mother and me, you caused a frightening scene at school. So many kids could have been hurt. On top of that, your little adventure made the evening news. But, I start to say in my defense. Sean, you are grounded for the next three weeks. That's not fair, I shout on the verge of tears. I made social studies class awesome, the fourth graders had more fun today than they've had in weeks, you can't punish me for that, besides you and mom have used the hat too, watch your tone with me young man, dad says, pointing a finger in my direction, or I'll add another week to this, it's not fair, I whine, standing up and kicking my chair aside, I leave the table and run upstairs to my room, I slam the door and plop on my bed, burying my head in the pillow, it's just not fair, chapter 13. Talking my way out of it have you ever been grounded before? If you have, then you know what I'm going through right now. Misery. I couldn't play video games last night, and even worse, I have to eat breakfast at the table this morning. I push pieces of my cereal back and forth through the milk but it just doesn't feel right. This is torture. Everyone knows that Saturday morning breakfast tastes better in front of the TV with cartoons. Mommy can I take my cereal over to the television and watch my baby horse cartoon? Sure. Mom replies to Katie. Just be careful not to spill any on the couch. Can I do that too? No, Sean, Mom, you know it's really not fair to let Katie eat in front of the television but not me. 
Well, if your shenanigans hadn't been all over the evening news, then maybe you'd be joining your sister. Ah yes, the news. I start to think about how I got into this mess in the first place. If I hadn't brought the hat to school and worn it during my report, then the police and firemen and media never would age. Have a new come. Mom and dad never would have been called in to speak with Mr. Braxton. Birchwood Elementary School would never have been on the evening news and I would be watching my favorite show right now or making plans to see my friends. Him. It dawns on me as I stare down at my soggy breakfast. Johnny, it's all Johnny's fault. I am grounded because of Johnny. He's the one who begged me to bring my hat to school. He's the one who called me a chicken if I didn't bring it to school. Mom, it was really Johnny's fault, I explain. He begged me to bring it to school. Then he teased me and called me names. That's the only reason I did this. Oh, so it's all Johnny's fault, is it? Mom asks. Yes, it is, I state proudly. So if Johnny told you to stick your tongue on a frozen telephone pole or jump off the roof or paint your whole face green, you'd do it? She asks. No, I argue. Those are all stupid things to do. And I'd probably get hurt or in trouble if I did. Exactly, Mom says. And Bringy. And your hat to school is the same thing. This is an important lesson for you, Sean. There will always be someone who pushes you to do something that you shouldn't. When that happens you need to stop and think, maybe it was Johnny's idea but you didn't have to listen to him, fine, I sigh. Mom raises a good point but I don't want to hear that right now. Good morning everyone, Dad says as he walks into the kitchen and pours himself a cup of coffee. Good morning Dad nice to see you. I'm going to go watch cartoons now. Yeah nice try Sean, Dad sits down at the table next to me. You're going to be without cartoons for a while so get used to it. If you're that bored I'm sure we can find something for you to do. In fact, why don't you help me with the yard work today? That's a great idea, Mom exclaims. Oh boy, that is definitely not what I want to do today. But since there is no getting out of it, I finish breakfast and head outside to help Dad. First we grab some gardening tools from T. He shed in the backyard and start trimming the bushes and getting rid of the weeds. Ow, my arms are killing me, I complain. Hey Dad, can we be done now? That would be great buddy but your mother will have my head if we don't get this whole backyard taken care of. You know, I could use my hat to help with all this. Have you forgotten that your hat is the reason you are grounded and helping me with yard work in the first place? Dad responds. Okay, I get it. But Dad, were you ever grounded as a kid? I ask as I drop the clippers and give my arms a rest. Oh, you bet I was. I didn't have a magical hat to use but I got into trouble just the same, Dad says, as he puts his clippers down. I tell you what, let's take five and go get a drink of water. We both go inside to get a glass of water and then head back out to the yard. Dad pulls up a couple patio chairs and sits down. I don't think it's been five minutes yet. We can take a little more time. Sit down, Sean. You asked if I was ever grounded and I've got a story I could tell you about that. I sit down all excited to hear what Dad has to say. I remember one time when I was just a few years older than you are now, Sean. There was a new robot toy that had just come out. A few of my friends had one and I wanted one so badly. I didn't have enough allowance saved up and my parents, your grandparents, wouldn't buy it for me. So what did you do dad? Well, I waited until the weekend came. You see my parents always did their grocery shopping on Saturday mornings. So while they were gone, I took some dishes, small kitchen appliances, and other things from the house, brought them out on the front lawn, put up a sign and had a yard sale. You're kidding me. I laugh so hard I almost fall out of my seat. It's a true story Sean. I sold my mom's food processor and my dad's electric train set. It seemed as though I had gotten away with it at first but my little brother your uncle Alex ratted me out, were grandma and granddad M. And at you, oh they were beyond furious, not only did they take turns screaming at me, but they forced me to hand over the money from the sale. And obviously I was grounded, did you argue and try to get out of it? Oh I begged and pleaded with my parents, I even suggested to them that having a yard sale showed innovation and strong business skills that they should be proud of me, but they just added another few weeks to my sentence. Ha ha ha, dad that is hysterical. I never knew you did that, did you ever get the robot toy you wanted? No I never did, at the time not getting the toy and being grounded seemed like the worst possible things but I survived and so will you Sean. Now how about we finish this yard work? Okay dad, I get up still laughing. We bag up all the trimmings and put the tools away. Next dad pulls the lawnmower out from the shed and we head around to the front yard with it. Hello neighbors, Gladys Wilson waves her arm in the air as she rushes across the STR. E.T. to talk to us. I need your help. Roger is away on a golfing trip for the weekend, and our computer has been giving me a lot of trouble. I know you work with computers, Joseph. I was hoping you could come over and take a look at it. It would be wonderful if you came over too, Sean, I don't like the sound of that. What does she want with me? Oh okay, Dad pauses. 
I guess we can do that. We leave the lawnmower in the yard and walk with Mrs. Wilson over to her house. Sean, Mom opens the front door and calls to me. Where are you guys going? I rush back to Mom and fill her in. Mrs. Wilson says she needs Dad to help her with her computer. I don't know why, but she said she wants me to come too. Well, if there's any sign of trouble, both of you run back here as fast as you can. Mom definitely sounds a little paranoid. But I don't blame her. There is something strange about Roger and Gladys Wilson. I run to catch up with Dad as he's entering their house. Our computer is right, Ove. Are here, Mrs. Wilson says and leads us to a desk in the corner of the room. It just started acting funny. Dad sits down at the desk and starts working on her computer. That was quite a scene at school yesterday, wasn't it? Mrs. Wilson asks me. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. You guess? I thought you'd have more to say than that, Sean. After all, didn't this commotion start in your classroom? Oh, well, there's not much to say. We were doing presentations in class and then the alarms went off and Mr. Braxton told us to go to the gym and we did. Hum, interesting. I wonder what set the alarms off. I'm not sure, Mrs. Wilson. Some of the school employees said that you were called into Mr. Braxton's office. Is that true? Uh, why would he need to talk to you? Do you know something? Uh, where is she going with this? Why is she questioning me so seriously? Okay, Gladys, Dad says as he gets up. It should work for you now. Come on, Sean, let's go home, no convincing needed. Thank you, gentlemen, Mrs. Wilson exclaims and shows us to the door. We cross the street and hurry back to our house. So what was wrong with her computer, Dad? Well, she needed to update some programs, but other than that her computer was fine. Dad grunts and pauses for a moment. Was that weird? That seemed weird to me. Oh, that had weird written all over it, Dad, I say as we reach our front door. How did it go, Mom asks when we enter the living room. Um, I think we were duped, Dad says. What do you mean, well, where do I start, I say taking a deep breath. Dad got called over to fix a computer that had nothing wrong with it and Mrs. Wilson questioned me over and over again about what happened at school yesterday. She wouldn't let up. Something is very strange about that woman, Mom insists. She always seems to show up and stick her nose in our business. It's like she has absolutely nothing better to do. Note to self, keep an eye on Mrs. Wilson, epilogue I'm a bit shaken up by everything Mrs. Wilson said to me, but I help Dad mow the front lawn, and then we come back inside for lunch. Mom has sandwiches and salad all set up on the table. I have an idea, Dad says, while scooping pasta salad onto his plate. What do you say we all take a bike ride after lunch? Oh yes, Katie bounces up and down in her seat. That sounds like fun, Mom says. Can I wear my hat on the bike ride? I ask. It was worth a try. No, Mom and Dad say at the same time. I help Mom wash the dishes after lunch, and then we all head to the garage and get out our bikes. Where are we going to ride to? Katie asks while putting on her helmet. Why don't we do the whole loop around the neighborhood, Mom suggests. So off we go. Hey Katie do you want to race? I suggest. Okay, I'm going to beat you Sean, I don't know, Dad says. I bet I can beat both of you, Katie, Dad and I all pick up the pace trying to be the first one to the end of the block. I'm in TH. He lead but Dad is catching up fast. Who's going to be the winner? Dad asks as he pushes past me. That would be me, Mom shouts. Mom never likes to race us but today she pulls into the lead and claims the win, yeah mommy, Katie cheers. I didn't see that one coming, we continue riding going through the whole neighborhood and back to our street. Just as we get up close to our house, a strange car pulls into the driveway. I wonder who that is, Dad says as he gets off his bike and walks it up to the driveway. A familiar face gets out of the car. Oh hello Mr. Braxton, what brings you to the house, Dad asks. Well, I am very sorry to disturb you on the weekend but since yesterday so much has happened and I feel I should share some of this with you. Do you have some time to chat? Why of course, Mom jumps in. Please come in and make yourself comfortable in the living room. Mom and Dad go inside with Mr. Braxton. Katie and I put all the bikes away and then go in and join them. Sean, Mr. Braxton says. I know I was a bit harsh at school but please understand that I had to take it very seriously. My phone has been ringing nonstop since yesterday, and I have also received several emails from parents. Many parents were worried and had harsh things to say. However, there was some good that came from your adventure too. What do you mean by that? Dad asks. I mean that some parents had very nice things to say. One mother told me that her son has never come home from school excited about what he did in class until yesterday. I had a father come to my office to tell me that his son couldn't stop talking about the field trip and how great it was. I would like to read you a few of the emails I have received as well, if I may. He pulls a piece of paper from his pocket, unfolds it, and starts to read aloud. Dear Mr. Braxton, I wish we could have been notified ahead of time that the fourth grade was taking a field trip, however, it was a truly positive experience for my dog. H-T-E-R. She came home from school with so much enthusiasm. 
a hands-on approach provides the children with an alternative way to learn and absorb the information. The school should be providing more opportunities like this. Here's another good one, he went on. To the principal, I was never a good student when I was young, and I don't remember much from my history lessons, but today my kid came home and told me all about a field trip and about this guy named Ferdinand Magellan. If there were classes like that when I was a kid, I would have done a lot better in school. If you're doing more of these field trips, I would love to come along as a chaperone. You see, Sean, Mr. Braxton folds up the paper and smiles at me. Your imagination and your hat actually help some of the students learn more and enjoy school much more than they ever have before. That is so wonderful, Mom says, wiping tears from her eyes. Oh, that is truly wonderful. After you left the school, Mrs. Bodine suggested that your hat would be very useful for the fourth grade curriculum, Mr. Braxton says. I know she was joking, but how great would that be? That would be excellent, I say. Mr. Braxton, the hat would be very good for lessons in kindergarten, too. I bet it would Katie, he smiles at her and gets up. Well, I have taken up enough of your time. I still have a lot of emails to go through and phone calls to return. The Channel 7 reporter has left me several messages and I've been avoiding her for as long as I can. How on earth did Channel 7 find out about this anyway? Mom asks. To be completely honest, I haven't a clue, but it definitely concerns me. Therefore, I will be speaking with all of the teachers and school employees this coming week. I'm sure I'll have more questions for Sean in the next few days as well. Mr. Braxton says. We certainly understand that, Dad assures him. Mr. Braxton, since some of the parents were happy about my presentation, does this mean that I don't have to stay after school? It can't hurt to ask. Well, I commend you for trying, Sean, but your punishment still stands. The teachers will be expecting you after school, and you will be staying inside during all recess times. But I tell you what, we can discuss field trips as they come up. How does that sound? That sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Braxton. Thank you very much, Mr. Braxton, Mom says. Yes, thank you very much, Dad adds. Goodbye, everyone, Mr. Braxton waves and walks out the door. Hey, Dad, since my presentation helped a lot of the kids, does this mean that I'm not grounded anymore? Hold on now, he laughs. You're not getting away with it that easy. I agree things turned out better than they could have, but you still went against my rules. So as Mr. Braxton put it, your punishment still stands. The afternoon goes by very slowly without TV, video games, and getting together with my friends. I build with my blocks and even let Katie join me. We build the tallest tower we can. It gets so tall that I a situally stand on a chair to put the last few pieces on. As mom calls us to dinner, Katie and I smash the whole castle down and put all the blocks away. That was fun, Katie says. Yeah, it was, I agree. Following Katie out of my room and down the stairs to dinner, Katie and I help mom with the dishes after dinner and cleaning up in the kitchen. With that done, Katie goes into the living room and watches one of her favorite children's movies. Mom and dad sit down with her. Since I'm not allowed to watch TV tonight, I just take a shower and get into pajamas. After that's done, I grab some books from my bookshelf and climb onto my bed to do some reading. There's a knock on my door. Hi, Sean. Can I come in for a few minutes? Mom asks. It's been a crazy couple of days and I feel like we need to chat a little more. Sure. I put the book down. Mom comes and sits down on the bed next to me. First of all, she says, I am glad that Mr. Braxton came to talk to us. I was relieved to HEA or that your adventure at school did some good. Second, I don't know what Gladys Wilson's deal is, but after this week, she qualifies for the most annoying neighbor award. Qualifies, I ask. Mom, she takes home the gold medal. We both laugh. And third, but most importantly, Mom goes on. I know this hat has brought you a lot of excitement, Sean. Everyone in this family, me included, has gotten a thrill from using it. Yet I admit when your school ended up on the news, I got really scared. I worried about every possible thing that could happen. It's okay, Mom. You and Dad told me not to bring the hat to school, but I did it anyway. All I wanted to do was to show off in front of my friends, and I guess I didn't really think about what happened next. I understand why you grounded me. I know I probably deserve an award for the best whiner and complainer too, she laughs and puts her arms around me. Sean, your hat is a very special and powerful thing. If you want to keep it, then you need to be very R. Responsible with it. This includes never bringing it to school again. So if you can be responsible, then you can enjoy all the adventures that go with this hat. Agreed? Agreed. Mom gives me a kiss and gets up to leave the room. As she closes the door behind her, I can see my hat hanging on the doorknob. Yup, there are so many adventures to be had, and I look forward to each and every one of them. Thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed this telling story video, please do not forget to give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe.